Uh, it is a problem that sometimes happens to all men, and mm -hmm. that's what I wanna, we want to talk about in the discussion today. Because as someone who is turning 30, I'm feeling a bit... You're turning 30? No, actually, I've already turned 30. I'm feeling a bit of a back pain whenever I wake up in the morning, but there are actually worse problems. Yeah, yeah. And that's, why, that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about the growing pains of being a young man of two and old men. And we have a, an expert in the studio today. We would like to invite Dr. Zainal Adwin Zainal Abidin, who is a consultant urology and robotic surgeon from UITM Private Specialist Center. Welcome to the studio, sir. All right, thank you very much. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here today on the last day of the year, and I hope I can enlighten on a little bit of uh, men's health okay. as we all turn a little bit older. Thank yes, you. Just, just a little bit <coughs> older, you know, celebrating 2024. But first of all, thank you so much for coming. We just heard that you came back from your holiday as oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun holiday. We, we brought our family around. Yep. My, my daughters, my, my daughter, I have only one daughter, and my sons, <laughs> they all enjoyed the beach and mm -hmm. the sun. Good weather that we have in Malaysia here. Okay, okay. That's like good to know that before we kick off our topic, because again, about men's health, I'm, I'm a woman, so I, you know, have a different different type of concern when it comes mm. to uh, growing older and my own physiological you know, problems. But as for men, I want to know, as uh, men grow older, uh, what are some of the common health problems that men should like look out for or they should watch out for? Right. Before we go into that, mm. I would just like to say mm. that men's problems Men do not go to the hospital or clinic for their problems. Mm. Up to 65% of men mm -hmm. oh, studied wow. in America do not go to the hospital when they have issues. Okay. They always think that this one will go away. Yeah. And astonishingly, it's the wives, girlfriends, who bring the men to the hospital. So this topic yeah. is as important to the men as it is to the women as well. So most commonly, what will happen as you grow older is a little bit of problem when you pass urine. Mm. Yeah. So when you pass urine, when you were young, you can really shoot that candle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it can go fast, it can go quick. Yeah. But as you grow older, it tends to drip a little bit, mm. gets a bit s slower, mm. you don't feel really satisfied with it. Mm. And so that's the biggest problem, most common problem that men will have as they grow older. Okay, mm -hmm. so the um, lack of uh, function or lack of uh, well, well, it is velocity actually... in terms of your lower region, right? Yeah, yeah so okay. it's actually a, 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 like a concoction of things mm -hmm. that, that collect and uh, compound to cause this issue. Firstly, if you can imagine the bladder is like a balloon and the outlet of the balloon is where you blow it, right? Mm -hmm. So that is where the prostate is. So when men get older, the prostate tends to get a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. When it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it will block the area of where the urine will pass out. Mm. And in turn, the bladder will need to work a little bit stronger to bypass this obstruction. So previously, it was all fun and games, really fast. I could finish in one minute or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then as you grow older, you get a little bit slower because the bladder is really working hard to push the urine out. Because you need the urine to be fully expelled to prevent a lot of complications. Okay. So when you get a bigger prostate, you get a weaker bladder as you get old, older, this is when all the problems will come in. Mm. Thank you, but uh, can I just say, first of all, that the that, that problem about men not going to the clinic, it is a real problem. Because that reminds me of my dad so much. Yeah. Because whenever he's in pain, whenever yes, he comes yes. down with a fever or a flu, for example, he will never go to the clinic. My husband's the same thing. He until now he has like a like a foot injury, a high knee, a high ankle sprain. Has not gotten to the hospital any anywhere yeah. uh, to fix it. You know whatever other problems as well. My old my dad, my uh, father-in-law as well. Yeah, men just don't go, right? Yeah, it's just one of those yeah. things. Uh, it's sort of like a perception mm -hmm. that men are supposed to be invincible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are known to be breadwinners, mm -hmm. we lead the family and whatnot. So one off day to be sick is unacceptable. Mm. So that's why men have been programmed in that way that we, we can't be sick. And if we, even if we are, we will not show it. We'll just hope that it will pass. Okay. Mm. Of course, um, when we talk about, you were talking about the lower region mm. just now. So I think one of the main problems of men when they grow older is their sexual prowess. Mm -hmm. uh, people would say that usually people who are at the, between the age of 20 to 30, they are at the peak of their, of their experience, yes. but sometimes yeah. it's not the case. And mm -hmm. sometimes people, young people do experience even erectile dysfunction. So I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I wonder if you can shed some light about that. Right. Like what is it? What is ED? And how does it cost young men? Sure thing. No problem. Mm -hmm. As we um, progress, you, you will see that there are many, many more younger people who get erectile dysfunction. It's part and parcel of life, perhaps because of work, because of the stresses, because of our way of life, um, the food that we eat, the physical activity that we do not do. So all these things consolidate and cause, can cause erectile dysfunction. So before we go into all the causes that can cause erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. we've got to know what is erectile dysfunction. Mm. It's popularly known as ED. ED is like a big taboo in my clinic. Nobody talks about it when in the waiting room, they only whispered it to me, I have a problem down there, and that's it. But it's such a big deal nowadays with Malaysia becoming an aging nation. We've got a lot more older, more mature men on the streets mm -hmm. running around, more people are living longer, so you've got this problem to come in. So erectile dysfunction is defined as the inability of the male organ to be at attention until you get satisfying sexual uh, relation or intercourse. Mm -hmm. So that is what erectile dysfunction is uh, defined as. So as you can see from the definition, there are not a lot of um, quantifiable things. No time, there's no duration. It's just barely what we feel, what men feel. If they're not satisfied, then probably it is erectile dysfunction okay. because it is not something that is measurable. It's uh, based on the individual. Some people might say, it's okay, I'm fine. Uh, some people say, this is a big problem. So. That's the definition. It's based on the person's actual uh, feeling okay. of sex. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. it's not necessarily um, whether or not your, you know, again, your tool, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not it, it can, you know, go out faster or like, you know, it fully excretes itself yeah. or, you know. Uh, so it's just a feeling for men. I'm curious, uh, for ED, at what age or, or what's the age group of men that's impacted by ED? Well, usually you, you want to go, uh, when you talk about uh, how common it is, mm -hmm. it is more common in people who are 50 and above mm -hmm. because when you are at 50, you've got all the lifestyle diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, you've got a bit of cholesterol, high cholesterol. So all these things contribute to having erectile dysfunction. And as when you grow older as well, there is a condition called hypogonadism, mm -hmm. of which where there is a, a reduction in the secretion of the male hormone testosterone. So okay. when men do not have testosterone, this is what happens. They get low libido, mm. they get poor erections, and at the end, they just can't <coughs> function as a man. Women, they have menopause, of which where yeah. their hormones stop being excreted, and they, they don't get their periods or menses anymore. Men, there is a term called andropause, of which where mm. the testosterone level is low, and then men get similar symptoms, such as poor mood, poor energy, body hot aches. Hot flushes as well? Yeah, hot okay. flushes as well. So these things are um, the signs of low testosterone. More common in older mm -hmm. or, or aging uh, people. But if we were to talk about erectile dysfunction, I just want to highlight to a point that it is getting more and more common in younger men. Mm. But probably because of stress. Mm. There are many facets to why ED happens. Let's go into that. Yeah. Firstly, it's psychological, so on the head. Secondly, it's physical, so it's anatomical, your blood vessels, your nerves, um, and then the, the tissue itself. And then there's also your nervous system acting towards how the feedback from the brain that you want to give your body an erection. Mm. So these are the things that compound and create an erection. Mm. So when it comes to a situation of high stress, mm. you don't get enough rest, you don't get enough sleep, you're thinking a lot of things, you, get a, you have a psychiatric or psychological issue that mm -hmm. you're thinking all about, depression, um, you know, a low mood, even mental disorders like schizophrenia and things like that, these can cause erectile dysfunction. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's very interesting oh. that you mentioned that it is a taboo thing yeah. to be talked about. I know that a lot of men are embarrassed about this. Yeah. They probably a lot of men going... joke about this as well, yeah, right? Yeah, and because and usually we do not want people to know about mm. this. It's yeah. understandable. Yeah. So for people who are watching, I wonder if, um, if they are experiencing this as a doctor, what would you recommend them to do? I mean, are they, if they are not going to the doctor, if they are, whatever happens, mm. by hope, by hope, they're still not going to the doctor, right. is there any way they can probably change their lifestyle to aid with this? Okay, so when you are feeling a little bit of these symptoms that I've just mentioned of being unsatisfied in your sex life, well, first thing, if it doesn't bother you, 
you must think, must remember that 50% of all erectile dysfunction leads to a heart attack. Oh. What? All right? So, if you have erectile dysfunction at whatever age, yeah. it's 50% a risk factor for you to have a heart problem, mm. particularly a heart attack. Okay. So, cardiac health is affected by the erections. So, it's an early sign. Mm -hmm. So, if you have erectile mm -hmm. dysfunction, it might mean that you will have a heart problem in the future. Mm -hmm. So, if that is not enough for you to get it checked, remember your heart's going to go you know, haywire in a little mm -hmm. bit, so might as well just sort it out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, I would like to highlight the problem of men not talking about it. Mm. Mm. Obviously, we need to make it a culture to talk about it. And I am sure that it's very difficult. And that is why a lot of products online mm. get high sales, because yeah. it's anonymous. Mm. You don't even have to put your name. Yes. But people try a lot of things, and you do not know what chemicals are being put into this over-the-counter online medications. Yeah. So, and one more thing that I've seen is that a lot of people have, um, they have certain misconceptions about uh, sexual relationships. Mm -hmm. This is particularly driven by media, by TV shows, mm. movies, by what they're seeing online, mm -hmm. things like that. Trust me, it is not like what you're seeing online. The average intercourse time is perhaps less than 10 minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I am sure the media is painting it to be a little bit different. And a lot of people have these perceptions and this leads to anxiety. Mm. And when they have that anxious feeling of, I'm not doing something that is allegedly normal, mm -hmm. yeah. so I can't perform. So then you have a benchmark that is too high and unrealistic, yeah. and then you think that it's a problem. But whatever it is, if you have unsatisfied feelings of sexual intercourse, of erections, do come and see a doctor. It is a sign of bigger problems to come. Yeah. yeah. Again, just a fact, I just learned about 50% could lead to heart failure. And that's mm -hmm. a very, yeah, my jaw immediately dropped. I'm like, huh? Mm -hmm. how, so how does that correlate between um, your, uh, your, the heart and, you know, men's lower region? Yeah. How does, uh, how is it connected? Super. And um, is there a way for, you know, when a person comes to you and tells you, doc, I have a problem, um, is it sol 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 solvable? solvable? Okay, so how it is connected, mm -hmm. firstly, obviously the heart is a pump. Mm -hmm. It pumps blood through all your body, right? right? Your nether regions do need blood as well. So if the pump is not working as efficiently or as strong as it should be, you will not get blood down there. Okay. Erection is a process that needs blood. So if the blood is not being pumped down there or the heart is not strong enough to pump enough blood down there, mm -hmm. then you won't get an erection. So that is a sign that there's a problem with the heart. Okay. So that's how it's related. That is the, the blood vessel bit of it. Uh, and in terms of uh, other things, like diabetes, how it causes, it, because it causes a lot of small vessel uh, blockages. Mm -mm. And then in turn, the nerves that need these small blood vessels to get their nutrition and mm -hmm. all that, the nerves die off mm. and they don't get right. erection because there's no more um, nervous system interplay down there. So erectile dysfunction doesn't only affect your sexual experience but it affects your health as well. So yeah. men, please go check if you have it because it could be dangerous for you. Uh, but we, uh, we don't have much time left but I wonder if you can touch a bit about the prostate okay. uh, yeah. when talking about men's yeah. health because right. it is one of the most uh, the things that come up when I yeah. Google search uh, yes. men's yeah. uh, uh, problems when they're right. getting old. But first of all, one of the first questions that I saw is people People asking where is it exactly? Right. I wonder if you can enlighten it okay. to us. I know it's going to be difficult, doctor. Right. But yeah. So just imagine your waist, mm. right? That's that's where uh, most things are. So that's where the dome of the bladder. The bladder is like I said. Imagine it's to be a balloon, so it mm -hmm. goes up, fills up with urine, and goes down when it, it expels the urine. At the neck of that channel is where the prostate is mm. in men. If you want to know uh, that little area between the scrotum and your, uh, I could say, anus, mm. mm -hmm. that space we call perineum, that is where the prostate is. Mm. Mm. So it is not a big organ. Um, you know, it's mostly, uh, people usually describe it as the uh, size of a, a walnut. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah? But as you get older, it can be as big as a baseball ball or a golf ball, things wow. like that. Mm -hmm. So 
you wanted to know more about prostate because of the yeah. because Malaysia becoming an aging nation, a lot of people will live longer. Mm. The prostates will get bigger. They will have uh, that problem of uh, passing urine. The problem mainly is we cannot differentiate between non-cancerous and cancerous problem of the prostate mm. oh. with symptoms alone. So that is why it's very important when you see or you feel something different about your urination, mm -hmm. go see a doctor to get it checked. The only thing that we have to differentiate at the moment is a blood test called the prostate-specific antigen, mm -hmm. the PSA. It is advised for you to get it if you are 45 and above, if mm -hmm. you have relatives who've had prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. If you do not have, then 50 and above, get a PSA check once. If it's normal, the next one can be a few years along the line. Mm -hmm. If it's not normal, then it should prompt us to investigate you further. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, is if you go for a medical checkup, if you're at the right age, get a PSA checked. Mm -hmm. It's not expensive, it's, you can ask your doctor for it, no problem. Mm -hmm. If it's high, it can mean a lot of things, but at least it prompts the doctor, the urologist, to investigate you further. Mm -hmm. And then once you are certain that it's non-cancerous, then we go along the lines of medical treatment or minimally invasive treatment. Mm. The technology for prostate enlargement to shrink it is so vast at the moment. There are many, many options that we have. We can have medication to shrink it. We can have similar, simple, simple procedures to just open up the channel to make you pee a little bit more efficiently, mm -hmm. more faster. You can use water vapor injection on the prostate itself to shrink it. Okay. And ultimately, you know, you can do the traditional way is where you scrape the prostate to make the passage larger. Mm -hmm. That if it's not, you know, cancerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's cancer, we need to determine first where is it actually gone to because yeah. cancer its attitude its behavior is that it spreads yeah. mm. if it doesn't then you have the option of robotic surgery mm -hmm. of which i am a specialist in in fact i trained for robotic surgery yeah. um, this is new technology not so new globally but in malaysia it's catching up mm. for the past 10 years we've got a lot of centers offering uh, robotic surgery as well and uitm private specialist center is yeah. one of those centers mm -hmm. so Robotic surgery for prostate cancer is ultimately a removal of the prostate. Using minimally invasive techniques, you do not get a large scar as what you should get when you, do, when you go do the traditional yep. method of surgery. So that's the problem with the prostate. Aging men, of course, the prostate gets bigger. Don't just say it's just nothing. It can be cancer, so get it checked. Mm. Yeah. That's a very, very, very scary thing to think about. Um, men out there who are watching, if you're like sitting at home and thinking right now, ah, why should I check? I'm just going to grow old and do whatever I want. No, you're going to affect your, your health. So ladies and gentlemen, we're slowly running out of time. We didn't even touch on BP, uh, B, BPE even. But if you guys want to, of course, uh, go ahead and get your, your health check, health screening done, um, they can come and see you, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm open. You can Google my name. Uh, we've got uh, ways to contact me and we can move from there. All right. Okay. So again, men out there, please go and make it your 2024 goal uh, to go and get a health screening done. Um, go and get all of the necessary tests done. And if you're um, above the age of 40 to 50, uh, above 40 lah, even, even like even 30, you know, 30 yeah. years, just please go and get your prostate check, checked and everything else checked. Oh. Meet those doctors, man. Okay, <laughs> but we would like to appreciate you coming to, uh, into the studio, Dr. Zainal Adwin Zainal Abidin. Uh, really, really appreciate your input and hopefully we have spread some awareness yeah. especially to those who do not want to go to the hospital so the guilt to do so I know. <laughs> all right uh